In Vermintide 2, your choice of subclass has a big impact on your playstyle, and few are as accessible as the Ironbreaker. The Ironbreaker, Barden's sturdiest variant, is an extremely competent class and one that is very open to beginners. But if you eventually want to progress all the way to Legend, you do have to know what you're doing. So in this guide, I'll go over a few ways in which you can optimize your Ironbreaker so you can be a sturdy Dwarven shield wall for your team on any difficulty. Everything you'll see here was played on the Legend difficulty, but most of it will scale down just fine, and here and there I'll point to some specific changes that you might find are useful for the lower difficulties as well. So before I continue, I want to stress that it's really hard to play the Ironbreaker wrong, or at least completely wrong. Unlike my Slayer guide where I made a pretty clear-cut build of what is certainly stronger, with the Ironbreaker your power is so incredibly front-loaded by your passives, you can get away with utilizing most things just fine. That said, we're here to talk about optimization, and I'll tell you about a few different ways to do so. The main strength then from the Ironbreaker comes from the fact that he is incredibly durable, and as such doesn't need to invest much into additional durability. The Ironbreaker doesn't get punished easily. If you play him well, however, he becomes an incredible addition to your team, the absolute backbone that can make sure no horde touches your allies, and when they do go down, you're most likely last man or dwarf standing with good possibility to pull it back together. Notably, the rather recent changes to spawn timers, which reduce disablers and upped hordes, basically works as an indirect buff to the Ironbreaker, because dealing with hordes is where he excels. So let's first go over some of the basics. By default, the Ironbreaker has a number of defensive passives. He naturally takes less damage from attacks than most other characters, he has more stun resistance than other characters, and perhaps most notably, he has one entire stamina shield extra without talent point investment. If that wasn't enough, the Ironbreaker has a buff that completely absorbs any attack, which then triggers a 20 second cooldown. Now one crucial thing to understand here is that friendly fire will also trigger this protective buff, and so will shoves by enemies, even though they don't normally harm you in any way. Being aware of when this ability is up will obviously help, but even without actively paying attention to it, it will save you from unexpected damage. His activated career ability is called Impenetrable, and taunts every non-boss within a small area of effect, but most importantly further reduces the damage the Ironbreaker takes from attacks while allowing him to block with no stamina penalties. Now the taunt element itself is incredibly situational. Certainly there will be times where being able to put pressure off of your allies will be very useful, but in general, the main purpose of this ability won't come down to taunting, but rather comes down to timing it and using it proactively when you know that unavoidable damage is incoming, say from a gun rat, poison rat, or perhaps when you are simply backed into a poor position. So, especially if you are just starting out, don't feel bad about using this ability. Saving it up for a perfect situation to taunt enemies will be wasteful. See it mainly as a huge extension to your already incredibly durable dwarven friend. Let's go over probably the most important part, your weapon loadouts. Now I mentioned that the Ironbreaker serves as a shield wall for your party, and most people will logically assume that means a shield is mandatory. In fact, it's easily the number one question I get when I stream Ironbreaker gameplay, why don't you use a shield? Well, that's because the idea couldn't be further from the truth. Neither the shield and axe nor the shield and hammer combos are required, in fact I would generally advise against using those. Keeping in mind with what I said earlier, it's hard to play the Ironbreaker very wrong, so if you do find a particular liking to the shield combos then by all means you can make it work, but in general if you want to optimize, you'll want to avoid these big clunky pieces of metal for a few reasons. First of all, the shield and X combo is far better than the shield and hammer combo, so if you are looking to play with shields, something that works a lot better in premates than quick match I should note, then you should probably go with the shield and X for the plain reason that this combination brings with it way more single target damage than the shield and hammer combo does. If you do go with the latter, you are completely gutting any elite or boss damage which isn't going to be remotely ideal for your party. So the main reason to go with the shield and axe combo is because this gives you amazing shield pushes and shield slam charged up attacks and when chained these can completely stun like a horde of enemies which if followed up correctly by your allies can certainly make hordes rather trivial. So if you are set on using the axe and shield combo I would advise a few things. Namely your first charge up hit which is the shield slam is very important to start out with giving you much needed crowd control potential. Whenever you go into a fight charge this up first and you can always cancel the next charged hit with a block allowing you to spam shield slams by starting up the first charged hit again. Second, although the shield push is the best push in the game, be aware that you should use this rather sparingly, at least on the higher difficulties. In most cases you'll simply be wasting stamina if you overuse this ability while not actually thinning out the horde in any significant way. 
On the downside, the shield and axe, or hammer for that matter, suffers from lower damage output due to worse weapon chains. Keeping in mind that the shield slam virtually does nothing in terms of damage and has the worst dodge potential of any weapon type in the game. It has the most stamina of any weapon type, sure, but you can't block everything. Plus, especially as an ironbreaker who already has increased default stamina, you are easily reaching a point where you are going for overkill when it comes to maximum stamina. And in general, tanking isn't done by blocking, but rather by crowd control. The shields are good at crowd control, yes, but so are one-handed and two-handed hammers. The one-handed hammer and the two-handed hammer are both horde crowd control or tanking weapon types and in almost every scenario I would recommend these weapons over going with a shield type. The one-handed hammer has only half a stamina shield less than the shield combos. Meanwhile, it has excellent dodge range and efficiency and better charged up attacks, allowing you to deal with the leads and bosses just fine. Moreover, the main reason to use this weapon is because the light attacks are rather fast and deal a huge amount of stagger, resulting in you being able to stunlock hordes incredibly well. That said, for quick match especially, I find the two-handed hammer tends to have more success. It has less stamina and worse dodge range, but the main reasons to go with the two-handed hammer comes down to its larger sweep range. If you are working perfectly with your team and can coordinate yourself into small hallways or rooms, that sweep range isn't important, but chances are, especially on the more open maps, you will have good use of that sweep range, allowing you to avoid damage that mobs on the side would otherwise deal to you with the one-handed hammer. Also important is that the two-handed hammer charged attacks will one-shot Skaven clan rats, the default rats with clothing on, and with only a bit of power versus chaos investment, they will one-shot the basic chaos minions as well with 600 hero power. The one-handed hammer, however, falls just short of that cutoff point and will clear hordes slower in general. Single target damage wise they will do virtually the same output with one handed hammer charged attacks being used for single target and two handed hammer instead using light attacks, which are also both great against shielded and armor targets. So either way both of these weapon types will almost always perform better than shield combinations and are excellent main weapon types to use for the purposes of dealing with hordes, armored and shielded targets. Again, in quick match and more open maps, I would certainly give preference to the two-handed hammers, but you can't go wrong either way. If you do go with the two-handed hammer, one nice trick to keep in mind is that the push is very quick, which works very nicely with your slower sweep attacks. If you stopped bobbing and chain weaving sweep attacks to single out an armored elite or some such with a light attack, it's generally advisable to throw in a quick push to crowd control the rest of the horde afterwards to avoid incoming damage, before following up with your next charge sweep. Finally, the only other melee weapon worth considering is the one-handed axe. Now this is not an anti-horde weapon. Its sweep range is poor, its stagger is poor, and as such you can't effectively crowd control hordes with this. Instead, the reason to pick this would be a single target weapon that you supplement with the drake gun. The one-handed axe then shines against elites, armored, and shielded targets, especially if you correctly use the push attack, which are overheads and as such very strong, and deal significant damage versus bosses as well. Meanwhile, it still gives you good dodge potential, the same as the one-handed hammer in fact, and doesn't have any other glaring downsides. Talking about downsides, the two-handed axe or the pickaxe are both not weapons worth considering as they are incredibly slow and don't have any strong advantages over the aforementioned weapon types. So in short, if you want an anti-horde weapon, which in general you do, go with either the one-handed hammer or the two-handed hammer, depending mostly on your preference. Alternatively, if you want to use the drake gun, pick up the one-handed axe as your main weapon. Which then leads me to the ranged weapon options and let's start by removing the crossbow and handgun as possible weapons to use. The reason for this is that they are rather slow to use, especially the handgun, and simply don't deal enough damage to make up for it. A body shot with either of these weapons doesn't kill a globedeer, life leech or blight caller on legend, which are the most obvious target at longer ranges. Meaning you always have to connect a headshot, which means you can't use these as effectively as snapshot weapons and with so much potential for things standing in the way that's easier said than done too. Finally, they also don't have nearly enough ammo. And that lack of ammo actually brings me to the Grudge Raker, the shotgun. The Grudge Raker is especially effective against killing specials, requiring only about 3 pellets to connect, which isn't very hard to do. In order Order to one-shot the specials I mentioned earlier, but it has two major issues. First of all, it's the best weapon to kill your allies with, which means it can get pretty risky to use this depending on the map you're on and how aggressive your allies are playing. I find on Legend you're forced way too much to use it conservatively for it to be effective. But perhaps the biggest problem, I guess it depends on how adverse you are to killing annoying allies, is the lack of ammo, which means you are rather dependent on the mercy of map RNG. On a few maps, Righteous Stand for instance, this isn't that big of a deal because you have a couple of guaranteed ammo boxes in the right locations, but you'll find that you run out of ammo very quickly in most scenarios. It's not a bad option, it's your best choice for quickly removing specials, but it is certainly a less consistent and higher risk weapon. 
Now one of the lovely things about playing as an Ironbreaker is that you also exclusively get the Iron Drake arsenal with the Drake Gun and Drake Fire pistols, neither of which require ammo and both of which deal fairly little team damage. If you are using the one-handed hammer or the two-handed hammer, then I'd highly recommend you go with the Drake Fire pistols as your ranged weapon. They don't allow you to kill specials that fast, but they do give you an option against them, and importantly stagger most of them, which buys you some time. You could also use this as an anti-horde weapon by using the alternative fire, but I find this is less effective than simply using the hammer. Finally, the Drake Gun is a good option when paired with the one-handed axe, although I'd be more inclined to recommend the hammer and pistol combo for the main reason being that the hammer slash pistol is also good against hordes and will have less of a hard time with specials. Nevertheless, the nice thing about the Drake Gun is that it completely trivializes hordes, and if your team moves correctly, you will burn down any horde within seconds while building up a lovely pool of temporary HP in no time, making you even more durable. So when it comes to weapons, the main build is to go with the one-handed or the two-handed hammer plus Drake Fire Pistols. An alternative build, slightly riskier but potentially with higher reward, is the Drake Gun plus one-handed axe combination. And then we arrive at talent choices. At level 5, I would recommend Stoutfellow. Stoutfellow is a flat survivability increase and that's really all there is to say for it. The extra stamina is generally overkill, but worth considering depending on your item properties. For instance, the two-handed hammer greatly benefits from that extra stamina shield if you don't get it from any other sources. Shield of Alaya is inadvisable because you aren't pushing much to begin with. If you do want to use shields, this talent is worth considering, but otherwise don't pick it. At level 10, I'd advise Gazul's Duty if you are going with the hammer slash pistol combo. The reason being that you are unlikely to overheat with Drake Fire Pistols, and this talent can be quite useful, as in all likelihood the task of reviving is mostly up to the Iron Breaker. That said, Iron Drake is a very good alternative as well if you do like to use your Drake Fire pistols more aggressively, and if instead you go with the Drake Fire gun option, I would definitely recommend going with Iron Drake. Finally, Miner's Rhythm I'd advise against because once more you are already working with great stamina and are very unlikely to gain a significant improvement out of stamina regeneration. At level 15, I'd recommend Tunnel Fighter above any other alternatives. This is a pretty big survivability increase as it knocks off a solid 7 seconds from your 20 second passive cooldown. At level 20, you will definitely want to get Grudgeborn, as it is simply by far the best one. And at level 25, I'd highly recommend Heart of Gromnil, which brings me back to how you generally use your career ability as a big survive cooldown rather than a supportive taunt. And this becomes an extra 50% duration increase, which is excellent. That said, none of these options are bad, though currently the boss taunt is bugged and only works if you are the host. Moving on to item properties. For the one-handed or two-handed hammer, I'd advise either Swift Slaying or Resourceful Combatant as your trait. Both of these will trigger during hordes, especially with Swift Slaying increasing your horde clear speed by giving you 25% more attack speed when you do crit, and Resourceful Combatant lowers your career ability by 2% for every crit you make. The other options aren't bad, but not particularly helpful either. For the one-handed axe, both of these work as well, but off-balance is a good choice to faster clear elites, which will give you a 50% damage bonus against the target you block within 3 seconds. Property-wise, you want to go with Power versus Chaos to improve your cutoff points, Base Stamina in the case of two-handed hammers, which means the level 5 talent Stout Fellow can be used again, or simply attack speed. For your ranged weapon, the Thermal Equalizer is really the only significant trait, reducing heat generation by 20%. And property-wise, you want to go with Power vs. Chaos and Crit Chance. Necklace traits are preference, property-wise go with player health and damage reduction. For charms, Decanter is a great trait choice as you generally want to be chugging the concentration potions to minimize your massive career ability cooldown and so more duration means more benefit, but any of these traits do work. Property-wise go with power versus chaos and attack speed. And finally, for trinkets, any trait will do, but properties you want to get curse resistance above all else, followed by movement speed. And with that, we've come to the end of this hopefully comprehensive guide. Thank you for watching, my name is Ben Haas, and I hope you have a good time melting some giant evil rats, and perhaps some of your allies, just here and there.